Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 18. So the first question that we're going to talk about today is a basic arithmetic question. Which of the following represents the sum of the factors for 18? All right, so first of all, let's remind us, uh, re let's remind ourselves what they mean by factors of 418. So the factors for 18 are essentially those numbers that when multiplied together are going to give you 18. So 1 and 18 are factors of 18 because 1 multiplied by 18 would be 18. 2 and 9 are also factors of 18, right? 2 times 9 is 18. And finally, 3 and 6, okay? Because 3 times 6 is 18. All right, but the question says, which of the following represents the sum of the factors? So what you would do here is that you would add each of these rows, okay? E each of these um, factor pairs. So in the first one, we would have 1 plus 18 gives us 19. Then 2 plus 9 gives us 11 and three plus six gives us nine. All right, so the only answer that would fit here is answer D, which is nine. The next question is an applied arithmetic question, and this is one of those setup problems where essentially the examiners just want to know how you would set up your problem if you were going to solve it, so they're not actually asking you for an answer. Jaina works five hours per day, four days a week delivering pizzas. If she earns, not earn, years, <laughs> if she earns $6.25 per hour, how much does she make in eight weeks? Okay, so here what you would do is kind of what you would do, um, you know, if you wanted to know how much you earned, right? So uh, first of all, how many hours does she work? And then how many, how much does she get paid per hour of work? And you would also uh, multiply that by the number of days she works in a week, earning, uh, delivering pizzas. And then finally, if you wanted to know how much she makes in eight weeks, you would also multiply all of that by the number of weeks worked. So if you look at the equations, the only one that fits this is the first one, okay, where you're multiplying all of, the, all of those elements. Question three is an algebra problem. It looks at dividing polynomials. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to x squared plus 6x divided by 9x plus 54? All right, so one of these, uh, the, this type of question is asking you to actually factor out um, these equations, okay, in, in order to make life easier for yourself. So if we look at the first, uh, the numerator at the x squared plus 6x, what you would do is you would factor out the x of that equation. So instead of having x squared plus 6x, you end, end up with x multiplied by x plus 6, okay? So if you multiply it out, um, as we said, you'd get x squared plus 6x. And then if we look now at the denominator, the, the bottom number, <coughs> excuse me, what you would do here is you would factor the 9 out. Okay, so take the 9 out um, and you end up with uh, the following, 9 multiplied by x plus 6. Okay, because if you multiply it out, 9 multiplied by x would be 9x and 9 multiplied by 6 is 54. Okay, so you can see that the top equation and the bottom uh, expressions are the same thing. And now this is going to be very easy for you because now you can go ahead and get rid of those two, uh, leaving you with x divided by 9, which is answer A. Question four is also an algebra question. And this, again, folks, this is one of your bread and butter algebra problems. So you have to know these really well because you will see these again and again, not only in the algebra portion, but also in the geometry, um, et cetera. So they're asking you the following. If 20x plus 15 is equal to 595, then what is the value of x? And here, what you have to do, first thing is that we want to isolate that x on the left side. So first step, let's get rid of that 15. So how would you get rid of a positive 15? Well, you would add a negative 15, right? Um, so if you do that on the left side, remember that you have to do it on the right side. So we, you would also subtract 
uh, minus 15 from the right side. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing it because on the left side, if you have negative 15 plus positive 15, they cancel each other out, right? It's a zero. Okay, so that would give us 20x is equal to 580. And now, uh, how do we isolate that x again? Well, it's multiplying by 20, so what we want to do is divide by 20. And remember, we have to do that on both sides. Again, why are we doing this? Because on the left side, 20 divided by 20 would give us 1. Okay, so we can cross that out. And that leaves us with x is equal to 29, which is answer D. All right, so our last question today is a geometry problem. And um, it tells you that a plane is traveling at a constant speed from LA to New York City. And it asks you to find the constant speed of the plane. All right, so before answering the question, let's quickly remind ourselves how to read these types of graphs. So the first thing that I usually do is that I look at the y-axis. So the y-axis is your vertical axis. And here it's telling you the distance in miles. So you can see that it start, the plane starts at zero miles, then it travels 200, 400 miles, 800, 600, and 800 miles. Next thing, let's look at our x-axis. So our x-axis is the horizontal line. And in this case, it's telling you the time in hours that the plane has traveled, okay? So if you wanted to know uh, would the distance traveled in zero hours, you would look at the zero on your x-axis and you can see that the distance is zero. If you wanted to know how, uh, how many miles the plane had traveled in one hour, you would look at the one, see where it hits the straight line, and then look to the left and that tells you 400, okay? So in one hour, the plane traveled 400 miles. If you wanted to see how much it traveled in two hours, you'd do the same, okay? So follow that line until the purple line and then follow it to the left. It tells you that in two hours, it's covered 800 miles. All right, so let's go back to the question. So this problem might be a little bit confusing because here what they're telling you, what they're trying to tell you is that, um, that the speed is equal to the slope of the line. Okay, so essentially what you have to find out is the slope. And if you remember, um, the slope of the line is what we call the rise over the run. Okay, so what that's telling you is that the slope or the angle of that line is equivalent to how much it changes in a y direction, okay, in a vertical direction, the rise, divided by how much it changes in a horizontal um, axis or the run. So in order to solve this, what we usually do is we just pick two lines, uh, two points on your line. Okay, so we could pick that one um, and we'll call that y1 and x1. And we can choose the second point and call that uh, y2 and x2. All right, so the slope of the line is then uh, mathematically x, uh, excuse me, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All right, so all you have to do here is plug in those numbers that we just spoke about before, okay? So y2 would be 400, right? That's um, the y2 value, and y1 would be zero. And then divide that by x2 minus y1 would be, which would be one minus zero. That gives you 400 miles per hour. Okay, so I hope that makes um, some sense. If it doesn't, make sure that you look at the graph again so that you understand where those numbers are coming from. All right, so that's the correct answer in this case would be A, which is 400 miles per hour. Okay, folks, well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. All the best of you. Stay positive and stay strong. Have a terrific week.